Okay, so this is going to be the box stretcher demo for the uh, Windsor stretcher jig, as we're now calling it for right now. <laughs> but um, so if you saw the demo for the H stretcher, kind of using the the same setup here. In fact, you'll still see a hole here for the center stretcher. But I'm going to use the same setup for the box stretcher because this is the way you would do it. You would want to lock in two of the legs into their, their stretcher. So a box stretcher goes from the front leg to the back leg, from the, from the back leg to the other back leg, and from this back leg to this front leg, so forth. So it forms a box here. So what you would want to do is install two of the stretchers. Um, it doesn't matter if you install the ones, the front stretchers and the rear stretchers or the side stretchers, but you want to uh, install opposing stretchers in the legs. And the reason for that is you can put these in the seat and it locks them in this orientation so that when you drill for this one, there's no opportunity for this leg to twist or anything like that. Um, part of the challenge with the box stretcher is getting these angles, these stretcher angles coming into these legs at the correct, at the correct orientation. If they're off a little bit, then your whole leg assembly here will be a parallel to ground, will be cocked. Uh, don't ask me how I know about that. Um, but <laughs> moving along, one of the reasons I came up with this jig is to address that particular problem. So just like before, um, I've marked the height of these stretchers. Uh, I marked them about, I think it's six and a quarter inches off the uh, uh, bottom of the seat. Not really sure how this is gonna end up looking. Uh, but um, this is will be fine for demonstration purposes. So whatever your plans call for in a box stretch or whatever you come up with, uh, and uh, that's what you'll do. So um, I've already gone over how to set the height of this up, but I've done that. To mark the height of the stretchers, I um, don't know if I showed this in the last video, but I just used this, this uh, big compass to, uh, to do that. And then came back and set these dividers to that height and then I use that. However you do that, it's fine, um, but you do need some dividers set up to the height, height there. So, like, uh, like my previous videos, we know the height of the stretchers, but we don't know how they're centered on the leg, so we'll use the center finder again. So let me put that through, attach it there, get my pencil, Put my center finder on there and align it where it's in line with the uh, with how the leg is running up to down, up and down, and there, and X marks the spot. So take that off, take that out, and then I'm going to put a little mark right there. So my Brad point has a home before it gets started. All right, so I need to load my brad point up into uh, there. Find the correct Allen key, I believe this is it. I don't think that was it. It was close, but not quite. Yeah, that one's it. That's over there. Okay, and I need a drill. Let me get one of those. So we need to feed this back through. And of course then chuck it up into the drill. Okay. Put that in there. And drill away. Just a little short. I'm just going to put some dummy stretchers in here. Well, I'm going to try. I'm not really sure. These uh, legs are repurposed. So. No, it worked fine. 
I said I'm worried about the uh, the thickness here because, uh, like I said, I had to return these legs. They're a little smaller than they would normally be, but that seemed to be fine. Yeah, that'll work. So now all we have to do is set up this to drill uh, the stretcher for the rear leg. It's at the same height, so there's really uh, no changes that need to be done. So first I want to take the shaft extension out. Move this over, point it in the general direction of the leg. a little bit. Okay, got to mark the center finder. We got to mark the center of that leg again, so let's put the center finder in here. Okay. And then just like we did before, now I'm going to tilt this a little bit more so, you know, it's running straight up and down with, the, with this leg. And there we go. Now while we're in here, this is a good time, even though we moved the jig, so you always want to uh, just verify real quick, make sure you're still in the same line. Yep, we're at the middle there, we're at the middle there. Yep, we're still good, so. Time to, uh, to drill this one. So we're just like four. Oops, set this down here. Take the awl, put a little prick in. Shaft back into the chick body and check it out. Take that out. Well, I should have checked my depth before I took the drill off, but it should be fine. Should be the same as the other one. Yep. So, good there. So, let me uh, set up for the uh, other two uh, legs, and I'll be right back. Okay, now we're back. I got the um, other pair of legs. Uh, into there so we're ready to drill for the uh, mortise holes for this side of the box structure. Um, one little tip I wanted to make is uh, I've been using these uh, Sean Murphy um, uh, drill stops. I got them about a week ago so I haven't used them that long but they're absolutely fantastic. They're working really good. Uh, quick tip is sometimes you get chips caught up in here and I just got one of these small little wire ties and you can just poke them through there and it works very very well very well to get those chips out so just a little tip if you happen to have those or looking about purchasing those so anyway let me go ahead uh, as this is just rinse and repeat so put this in here to line that up with the leg put our pencil in and Center. Back, these are all. And flip everything around. Chuck it up in the drill. The rag point right into that 
hold, and here we go. on for the next hole. So. Uncheck that. That. Move it over there. Get it pointed in the general direction and then secure that down well. You might hear a rattle just a little bit. That's actually the bearing in here. It's moving around. You can see I hold it. It doesn't. Um, so, like I said, rinse and repeat. The end. Center finder on. Pencil. Get that pointed in the general direction of the meat of the lid. Here we go. Take that off. Mark it again with that. All. And there we go. So, um, you, you do this, I'll demonstrate my little trick. So, just kind of move that in there and move that in there. All the chips come out. I can load this in. One thing I do want to do, as always, is just verify nothing's moved. Yep, that all looks good. So check it up in the drill. So, um, like I said, this is for demo purposes. I don't know if I'll ever make something <laughs> out of this chair. Probably will at least the seat. Uh, I don't know about these legs. They're, they got a lot of holes in them now. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm going to put the other legs in here. Use Curtis Buchanan's uh, bamboo skewer method to determine the length of each side of the stretcher. I'll cut some dummy stretchers and uh, get those uh, put in here and. Um, We'll uh, come back. All right, so here we are. We have the box stretchers in. Like I said earlier, uh, this is for demonstration purposes, so I'm not really sure uh, if I would make it like this uh, intentionally, but maybe so. We'll see what it looks like when I flip it over. I haven't even done that yet. But uh, so these are the two uh, the stretchers we drilled for. I think it took me longer to measure and cut these stretchers than it did to drill the mortises for them, uh, which kind of goes to prove my point on, on this jig. It is fast, it is easy, and it's very, very accurate. Now, one thing I forgot to mention when we got started is we are using, since we're, since these are, I think they're six and a quarter inches uh, off the bottom of the seat, uh, we are using these smaller body, um, uh, small small body for the jig and uh, so it's just like the larger one that was in the H stretcher it's just smaller and provides the uh, range of, uh, of uh, height that we need so like I said without let's see how accurate we are now just like in my H stretcher um, demo for the box stretchers I'll do the same thing I'm gonna put um, put a level here. Um, my bench is consistently out of level. In other words, the bubble is between the two marks, but it's touching the mark on this side. 
and I can take this one and balance it up here. And exactly the same, the bubble is touching the mark on this side. So if we move this up to the front leg, we get the exact same results. Bubbles touching the line on, on this one and it's touching the line on this one. So we're perfectly coplanar. So let's flip this around and see what it actually looks like. I don't know, not too bad. <laughs> like I said, uh, whatever. But uh, I think the important part is, is just how well this jig works. Um, um, like I said, I'm interested in selling these. I've gotten some, those of y'all that watch my previous videos, I've gotten great response on that, so I really appreciate that. So um, if you are interested in, in uh, maybe buying this jig, please uh, make a comment or DM me. Um, like I said, I have another video where I go over the whole kit. And so it's going to be about between $200 and $225. So I um, appreciate you watching. And um, hopefully this is something um, that you are interested in. Like I said, I think it's a game changer. So thanks again.